Um, so if so, now we guys we have two factors, right? X plus one and x minus one are factors of x to the fourth. However, we got to be careful here because does x plus one couldn't so? If we looked at what we said before, now we have two factors. But we've got to be careful here, because this times this doesn't equal that. Correct? So those are both factors, but they don't multiply. That's like saying you know, the factor you know, um, 6 and 2 are factors of 12. Is that true? Yes. But 6 times, oh, I'm sorry, no, bad things. 6 and 3 are both factors of 12. But we know 6 times 3 doesn't equal 12. Correct? But if we divide. 12 by 6 and 3, though, we can get these further factors. All right. Now, in this example, you guys can see here that I have linear factors. right? And I like when I have linear factors, because when I have linear factors, I don't have to do long division. I can now do synthetic division. However, you guys would agree with me that this, this times this equals x squared minus 1, right? Well, guess what? The product of two factors, like 2 and 3 are both factors of 12, right? Yes? 2 times 3 is 6. 6 is also a factor of 12, right? So what we can do is we could multiply these two factors to give us this, and then we could use long division to find our other factors. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to practice us using synthetic division here. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to factor this twice, all right? Um, or I'm sorry, we're going to have to divide this twice. So if we're given a factor of x plus 2, that's the factor, then what is the 0? If x minus 1 is the factor, then the 0 is one. x equals 1. And if x plus 1 is my factor, then my 0 is x equals negative 1. Okay. So let's practice setting up synthetic division. Let's just pick one at a time. You're going to take your 0. And you're going to kind of create a nice little L-shaped again. And then again, remember, you're going to take the coefficients of your polynomial, which would be 1, negative 1, negative 5, 1, and 4. Quick little tip, guys. Remember, if you have a missing term, like a 0 squared Colton or, like a, or no x, just remember to use a 0 in replace of that. Okay. So again, guys, first term you bring down, which is a 1. 1 times 1 is, so bring down the 1, multiply on the diagonals, add on the vertical. 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 1 plus 0 is 0. 0 times 1 is 0. Negative 5 plus 1 is 0. Plus, <laughs> negative 5 plus 0 is negative 5. Negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. 1 plus negative 5 is going to be negative 4. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. 4 plus negative 4 is 0. So again, guys, remember, though, our quotient here is just given our coefficients. Multiply on the diagonals, add on the verticals. This is our remainder, which is good. This is the coefficient of our constant term, our linear, quadratic, and cubic. Now. This is also a factor, right? x cubed minus 5x minus 4. That is another factor. So I can set this factor equal to 0. But we have a problem here. Because do we have any factoring techniques to be able to solve this? It's not, it's not gonna, we can't factor that. All right? Because that x cubed and the x messes everything up. So what we can do, though, is we can use our other factor to divide. Now be careful, because the biggest mistake students make is they take the 0 negative, and they divide the same polynomial again. Guys, we don't want to do that. We don't want to take, we don't want to take like our polynomial and divide it by both of our factors. We want to continually factor this down. That's like taking, taking 12, um, dividing, it, dividing it by 2, which gives you 6, and then you divide it by 3 to give you 2. Like You just keep on dividing it down with different factors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these coefficients and I'm going to put them in the next synthetic division. So I'm further factoring this down using division. We can't factor this using our algebraic techniques.
But what we can do is we can continually factor this down using, um, using long division. Or I'm sorry, synthetic division. So now again, bring down the 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. 0 plus negative 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. Negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. Negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4, and we get a 0. Sweet. So now let's write out that answer. Remainder, constant, linear, quadratic. So there's our quotient. Can we now set that factor equal to 0 and solve? Sure. Tell me once you figure out the pro Tell me once you see the issue. It's not factorable. Not factorable. Crap. Can we still find the zeros then if it's non factorable? We could do the quadratic formula. Oh, that means this is like fair game? Yep. Quadratic formula is fair game. So let's do this rather quickly, guys. It's not that bad. Remember, the solutions here is x equals opposite of b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So let's just plug in the values. Opposite of b is going to be a positive 1 plus or minus square root of b squared, which is 1 minus uh, 4 times 1 times negative 4 all over 2 times 1. Let's see here, guys. We have 1 plus or minus. Negative 4 times negative 4 is 16, plus 1 is 17. OK? So if I wanted to write my zeros, were we already given two zeros? Basically, we were given two factors, right? If we were given two factors, can't we say we know two zeros, right? We're given two factors, now we know our two zeros. So we could say our zeros are going to be plus or minus 1. And then my other one is this, 1 plus or minus square root of 17 over 2. Yes? Do you prefer like, like it written like that, or can we write decimals as well? You're going to do the square root of 17 without a calculator? Oh, you're right. right. So no, I do not want decimals, okay. approximations. Um, it is also it is nice to understand or make sure you guys understand. This also can be written as this, just in case like a test question looks like that. Like make sure you guys can simplify that, right? Um, and then last but not least, I don't want to overly complicate this problem, um, but just a little FYI, if you guys needed to use the if you guys, if these are now the zeros, can you find the can you write them as factors? Yes. Then I do that over there. If I give you the zeros, you can find the factors. So I mean, this is a little bit more of an advanced problem, but I just want to show you what it'd be like. This is x minus one times x plus one, and then these factors. I'm just going to use this. So the fact, the two linear factors would be x minus one half, minus one half square root of seventeen times x minus 1 half plus 1 half square root of 17. Again, guys, to find the factors, just take your 0, set them equal to 0. That's a little bit more advanced. I mean, I don't think you guys have anything. 